Okay, so as was said before, I'm doing my presentation on Pyometra. So what exactly is Pyometra? It's a completely preventable condition that is considered an infection of the uterus. However, it is now considered a secondary infection that occurs as a result of hormonal changes in the female's reproductive tract, which it was just thought to be a uh, primary infection at first, and so now it's considered a secondary. Um, Pyometra, or Pyo for short, in a lot of vet clinics, um, they use just Pyo because it's easier to say and faster. Um, it can occur in an unspayed dog at any age, but it typically occurs after the age of six. Um, and it all can be prevented by spaying your female dog, um, unless it's being used for breeding purposes. So once your dog has contracted Pyo, it has about 48 hours until the animal can become septic, which is 95% of the time lethal. Um, or at least that's what the articles were saying. I don't know if that's completely accurate, but from what I've read, it's... Are you going to define Pyometra later, or what those two... I was not going to do that. Okay, so let me do it. Okay. Pyo, P-Y-O, whenever you see that, means pus. And whenever you see Mitra, that's talking about the uterus. So pus, uterus. And a lot of the um, symptoms can vary depending on which um, stage of pyo you have, because there are two, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, kind of the overview of symptoms can be lethargy, um, depression, fever, lack of appetite, vomiting, excessive thirst, frequent urination, um, a distended abdomen, uh, vaginal discharge, and excessive licking down there. Um, the key that you're looking for essentially is the vaginal discharge, and it has a very foul odor. If you've ever worked in a vet clinic and been around this, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Um, so there are two different types of pyometra, and it's open and closed pyometra. So opened is when you have the opening to the cervix is still open, where all of the discharge can come out as pus instead of being left in there, which this is typically the first stage. And then when it moves to a closed pyometra, um, this is the more serious case where it, the cervix is closed, um, so there's no outlet for the pus, and then it just keeps building and growing and getting worse. Um, the most frequent symptoms of this are dehydration and increased white blood cell count, so x-rays and an ultrasound are typically needed to confirm a closed pyo since there is no external discharge, which is the key component in the open pyometra. And then if treatment is not received, death will occur because of the sepsis. So prognosis and treatment, if, if it's caught in time um, and taken to a vet immediately, prognosis is generally good. Um, if there are underlying issues, obviously you can't really say what the um, prognosis is. Um, the treatment is an emergency spay essentially and the whole uterus is removed. And then um, I worked in New Pal Vet Clinic for three years in high school and we saw pyometra several times. Um, the one time I was actually present for a pyometra surgery was with Bella. She is normally around 15 pounds. She is definitely not in this picture. Um, as you can see. So you took area. these pictures or? Did I was assisting with the surgery. The um, doctor's wife was actually taking oh, the yes. pictures. So uh, the Hildebrandts are the owners of the clinic and their Neat. husband and wife team. And again, this is just showing how swollen right here is. And then this is the size of her uterus, which is definitely not normal, especially for that size of a dog. No, before you go on, <clears throat> sometimes it's hard. I dissect a lot of these uteruses, and yeah, these are stinky, be careful. One time, I didn't real. I, I used to collect pregnant dog uteruses, because you know, then you dissect them. And one time I thought it was pregnant but it was this and I gave it to some students and I left the room and they started dissecting it and I came back as soon as I opened the door I knew what happened and so I learned uh, pyometra tends to be like a sausage just stuffed the pregnancies tend to be in lumps there's like a fetus and then there's a narrow part and then another fetus so that's how I kind of taught myself okay I and mean, when I hand these things out you know because I was handing them out didn't realize it was like we had to basically clear the lab for a while because it's really terrible. So that's all pus, and if it breaks, then the dog actually dies sooner because there'll be peritonitis. This will, if this breaks, it's right into the abdominal cavity. And then 
And then this is just another view of it, just showing exactly how the sausage essentially mm -hmm. is like all the way around. But I, you know, I love these pictures. Look at the blood vessels, and you know, you've got <coughs> all this connective tissue here. If you ever want to see how long one of these uteruses is, if you ever take it out, <coughs> cut all this tissue, and it's amazing how long it is versus it's kind of like a little misleading because it's all curved and. But uh, like on a sow, if you took out a sow pregnant uterus and cut it, it's like eight feet long from one end to another. It's like, wow. This, so this just kind of compares, this is obviously not Bella's um, uterus or part of the uterine. Um, this is a normal one. So that's about the average size of a dog, or average size of the uterus of a dog that small, or a section of it. I could so bring just, in a dog uterus. I've got Monique's <laughs> dog uterus. I'll do that sometime. <laughs> So this just shows um, the uterine horn right here, and this is um, Dr. Hildebrandt's hand, who he's, I'd say about Dr. Ulrich's size, so I oh, mean... Oh good, I thought she was going to say age. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, so I'm just okay. like, that's an average okay, yeah. male hand, I'm just going to say it's <laughs> bigger than my hand, so okay. you can obviously tell how much pus is in there, and that it's... And then Pretty let's severe. orientate them because sometimes you don't know. The cervix <coughs> is down here because, you know, the ovarian ends you can cut off and then so they're going to tie it off at the cervix. And then that's just a more close-up picture of the uterine horn. And then again, oh, and then spay and neuter. <laughs> Public service announcement. You're ready for questions? Yep, ready for questions. Okay, here's one. Yeah. Do you, I know you said it's uncommon in dogs that are not spayed and they're usually six and older. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular breeds or if a, a bitch is in breeding right now, if they have a higher chance of getting it? As far as I know, no, but I didn't look at breed specific, specificity. Mm -hmm. I can't say that word today. <laughs> specificity. Yes. I, does anybody know if there's some breeds that are more prone than others? I don't think I've ever seen that. I've never heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, here's the kicker though. A lot of these pyometrias occur in diestrus. What does that mean? Diestrus. It's when there's a CL on the ovary. And when there's CLs on the ovary, that's progesterone. And progesterone tends to be immunosuppressant. So a lot of these dogs come up with uh, pyometria when they're in diestrus. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs>